naman po tayo sa bagong edisyon. Kung saan? Makinig ka lang. Manood ka lang. At may isa, sagot ka na. So, Summit term, term exam. exam. Yo. I am Liza Marie Muahe. Jan Homer Makaisa. And Jessica Orsiano. And together we are... MNMNX! 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 Para sa unang subtopic, ating tatalakayin ang mga sumusunod. Economic appraisal of highway schemes, cost-benefit analysis, at under nito ay ang mga identifying the main project option, identifying all relevant costs and benefits, economic life, residual value, and discount rate. Use of economic indicators to assess basic economic viability. Advantages and Disadvantages of Cost-Benefits Analysis Economic Appraisal of Highway Schemes Sa pag-develop ng mga highway project, ang mga developer ay nagre-require ng economic assessment of the root options under consideration. At dito, nai-involve ang pag-compare ng kanilang performance against sa current situation at ito ay ginagamitan ng the do nothing alternative and or against the do minimum, minimum alternative sa engineering economics nagpo-provide ito ng number of techniques na nagre-resulta sa numerical values this by definition consider the time value of money an important concept in engineering economics that estimates the change in worth of an amount of money over a given period of time. There are some common measures of worth and those are the net present value or the NPV, benefit cost ratio, and the internal rate of return. Sa economic analysis, there are financial units and those are pounds, euros, and dollars na ginagamit bilang tangible basis of evaluation. So, what is CBA or cost-benefit analysis? Within Europe, the method usually adapted for the economic evaluation of highway schemes, termed cost-benefit analysis, utilizes the net present value technique where the cost and benefits of the scheme are discounted over time so that they represent present-day values. Paggamit ng method na ito, kahit anong proposal na merong positive net pres present value ay nagiging economically sustainable. The next one is identifying the main project options. Ito raw pag-identify ng main project option ay fundamental step para sa CBA process or cost benefit analysis process kung saan ang mga decision makers ay nagko-compile ng mga listahan ng mga relevant feasible options. Maraming procedure at pag-identify ng project option. Isa na rito ay ang paggamit ng personal experience ng mga decision maker at ang ibang eksperto sa highway engineering field. Then, making comparisons between the current decision problem and once previously solved in successful manner. The last one is examining all relevant literature. Some form of group brainstorming session can be quite effective in bringing viable options to light. Itong brainstorming ay nagkukonsist siya ng dalawang phases. Ang unang phase ay ang group ng people na kung saan sila ay nasa relaxed environment at kahit anong kanilang idea ay pwedeng gamitin sa pag-solve ng problem. 
Tapos yung second phase naman ay nagre-require siya ng planning engineer to return to normal judgmental mode to select the best options from the total list. Identifying all relevant costs and benefits. The application of cost-benefit for project assessment in the highway area is made more complicated by the wide array of benefits associated with a given road initiative. Some easier to translate into monetary values than others. Many of the benefits of improvements to transport projects equate to decrease in cost. The primary grouping that contains this type of economic gain is termed user benefits. Benefits of this type accrue to those who will actively use the proposed installation. This grouping includes Reductions in Vehicle Operating Cost Ibig sabihin, kapag ginamit daw itong new upgraded project, ito ay naglilid sa lower levels of congestion and higher speed than on the existing roadway. Kadalasan, nagre-resulta ito sa lower fuel consumption and lower maintenance cost. The next one is Savings in Time Ibig sabihin, pag-upgrade ng highway installation installation ay nag-reduce daw siya ng travel time as well as improving the reliability of transport services. Dahil na rin sa ayos ng dahiloy ng trapiko, nababawasan ang time travel na ating ginagamit. Lastly is the reduction in the frequency of accidents. Dito sa accidents, merong types ng damage na dapat i-consider at yun ay ang property damage personal injuries arising from serious accidents and fatal accidents. Itong property damage ay ang pinakamadaling ma-measure in money terms. The cost of serious but non-fatal accidents is much more difficult to assess. Medical cost and the cost of lost output and personal pain and suffering constitute a large proportion of the total valuation. Economic life, residual value, and the discount rate. Itong mga highway project kadalasan ay complex at pangmatagalan. With the cost and benefits associated with it occurring over a long time frame which we term the life of the project, a parameter dealt with in earlier chapters. Nagbibigay ito ng limit sa period over which the cost and benefits are estimated. Use of economic indicators to assess basics, basic economic viability. Dito, once na yung dalawang parameter of project and life and discount rate ay nasa ayos na, nag ito ng all costs and benefits to be directly compared at the same point in time. So yung decision maker ay kailangan na pumili sa actual mechanism for comparing and analyzing the cost and benefits para mag-arrive sa final answer for the be net benefit of each of the project options under construction. Other consideration. So, yung tatlong teknik kanina na nakalista ay pwede magamit sa purpose na ito. At yun ay ang net present value, internal rate of return, and benefit cost ratio. So yung net present value ay it will estimate the economic worth of the project in terms of present worth of the total net benefits. Then the IRR will give for each option under consideration the rate of which the net present value for it equals zero. Samantalang itong benefit cost ratio naman ay based on the ratio of the present value of the benefits to the present value of the cost. All three methods depend on discounting to arrive at a final answer. All if used correctly should give answers entirely consistent with each other but the specific technique to be used varies with the circumstances. So syempre merong advantages and disadvantages itong CBA or cost benefit analysis. One of its advantages is the use of the common unit of measurement. Money facilitates comparisons between alternative highway proposals and hence aids the decision-making process. 
The other advantage is that given that the focus of the method is on benefits and cost of the highway in question to be the community as a whole, it offers a broader perspective than a narrow financial investment appraisal concentrating only on the effects of the project on the project developers, be that the government or a group of investors funding a tall scheme. So, yun yung dalawang advantage niya. And then, sa disadvantages naman, yung primary basis for constructing a highway project may be societal or environmental rather than an economic one. If the decision is based solely on economic factors, however, an incorrect decision may result from the confusion of the original primary purpose of a proposed project with its secondary consequences simply because the less important secondary consequences are measurable in money terms. The other disadvantage is that the method is more suitable for comparing highway proposals designed to meet a given transport objective. At isa pa sa mga disadvantages niya ay some limited recognition may be given to the importance of cost and benefits that cannot be measured in monetary terms. Yung dalawang naunang disadvantage ay mamamanage sa pamamagitan ng maayos na pag-employ ng experience at competent decision upang masayos, masayos ang cost-benefit framework. Sa pagpapatuloy ng ating talakayan, akin namang ibabahagi ang mga kaalaman tungkol sa payback analysis, environmental appraisal of highway schemes, and new approach to appraisal. Ang payback analysis ay isang pamamaraan na naglalayong makatulong sa pagsusuri ng isang panukala tulad ng mga highway projects na pribadong pinondohan. Sa ganitong case, they put toll gates in place kung saan ang mga motoristang dumadaan dito ay nagpapataw o nagbibigay ng kanilang bayad o ang tinatawag nating mga tolls upang mabawi o may balik yung gastos na ginamit sa pag-construct ng daang ito. Ipagpalagay na ang pumamarang ito para sa pagsusuri sa isang proposal ay makapagbigay o makalikha ng dali ng pera na pumapasok during its economic life, then, at some point, yung kabuang halaga na makokolek will be exactly its initial cost. Sa analysis na ito, may tinatawag tayong payback period. Ito yung time taken para yung equalization ay mangyari. Itong pumamarang ito ay mas applicable sa mga projects kung saan yung time scale niya ay medyo may click para sa equalization. The reason being, the longer the money is tied up, the less opportunity that there is to invest it elsewhere. The payback period is a very simple calculation. However, it does have its drawbacks. Yung karaniwang mga problems na nararanasan dito ay gaya ng incorrect assumptions. What if yung cash flow expectations are wrong? Or the numbers suddenly fluctuating from year 3? What if the facilities being used needs unexpected upgrade? Sa mga ganyang case, it will then take longer to get back the investment. Therefore, it is best utilized as a backup technique, supplementing the information from one of the more comprehensive economic evaluation methods. While the method has certain shortcomings, it is utilized frequently by engineering economists. Its strength lies in its simplicity and basic logic. It addresses a question that it's very important to the developer of a tolled highway facility as a relatively speedy payback will protect liquidity and release funds more quickly for investment in other ventures. The following formula enables the payback period to be derived. Where C subscript 0 is the initial construction cost of the highway project and NAS is the net annual savings. The next subtopic is the environmental appraisal of highway schemes. There is a structure developed within the last 30 years. Ito ay ang tinatawag na environmental impact assessment. Isinagawa ang analysis na ito to value the effects of highway schemes on the environment. The procedure has its origin in the U.S. during the 1960s 
with environmental issues gained in importance. Some environmentalists take legal action during the public consultation during the planning stage of highway projects. At dahil dito, napagtunan ng pansin ang pag-assess kung ano ang magiging effect ng isang particular na proyektong itatayo o gagawin sa environment. The process was made under the National Environmental Policy Act 1969 which requires the preparation of an environmental impact statement for any environmentally significant project undertaken by the federal government. The following are the prescribed format for the EIS requiring the developer to assess the probable environmental impact of the proposal, any unavoidable environmental impacts, alternative options to the proposal, short-run and long-run effects of the proposal and any relationship between the two, any irreversible commitment of resources necessitated by the proposal. Samantalang sa isang sulok ng daigdig, bilang tugon sa nararamdamong pagkukulang sa umiiral na pamamaraan sa pag-assess ng environmental consequences sa mga pangmalakiang pag-unlad ng projects, naging interesado ang kalakhang Europe sa tinatawag nating Environmental Impact Assessment noong taong 1970. In the second action program on the environment published by them in 1977, The advantages of such a procedure was noted by the European Commission and the contribution of EIA to proper environmental management. Ang pinakang layunin nito ay yung paglalagay o pagbuo ng mekanism kung saan matitiyak na yung effect sa environment ng mga projects na na-develop ay would be taken into account at the earliest possible stages within their planning process. Ganon din naman ang layunin ng Directive na Council of the European Communities of 1985. Ito ay ang makatulong sa pagsisugurado kung sapat ba o hindi ang mga konsiderasyon na inilalaan o binibigay sa pamamagitan ng isang mekanismo kung saan na i-ensure natin yung kaugnayan ng mga environmental factors sa project under examination ay maayos na kinukonsidera within a formal statement. Within the UK, Since 1993, the Design Manual for Roads and Bridges has provided the format within which the environmental assessment of highway schemes has taken place. It identified 12 environmental impacts to be assessed for any new or improved road proposal. The 12 environmental impacts forming the assessment framework are air quality, cultural heritage, construction disturbance, Ecology or nature, nature conservation, landscape effects, land use, traffic noise and vibration, pedestrian, cyclist and community effects, vehicle travelers, water quality and drainage, geology and soils, and policies and plans. The next subtopic is all about the new approach to appraisal. During the late 1990s, The UK government reviewed its road program in England and identified those strategically important schemes capable of being started within the short to medium term and listed them as potential candidates for inclusion within a targeted program. Each of these schemes was subject to a new form of assessment that incorporated both the COBA-based economic appraisal and the EIT-based environmental assessment. This methodology called the new approach to appraisal. Sa method na ito, lahat ng mahalagang environmental impacts ay kinakailangang masukat. It is desirable that all impacts be measurable in quantitative terms, though this may not always be feasible. Appraisal summary table is designed for presentation to those decision makers charged with determining whether approval for construction should be granted. And if, if so, what level of priority should be assigned to it? The following are the five objectives and their constituents' impacts seen by the government as being central to transport policy. The first one is environmental impact. Second, safety. Third, eco- economy. Fourth, accessibility. And the last one is the integration. Environmental impacts. Noise. 
The impact of noise is quantified in terms of the number of properties whose noise levels in the year in question for the with proposal option are greater or less than those in the base year. Local air quality. Firstly, the roadside pollution levels for the year 2005 are identified for both the do minimum and with project cases. Then, the exposure to this change is assessed using the property count, with the diminishing contribution of vehicle emissions to pollution levels over distance taken into account using a banding of properties. The pollution increases of those dwellings situated nearer the roadside will receive a higher weighting than increases from properties farther away under this system. Landscape New approach to appraisal describes the character of the landscape and evaluates those features within it that are deemed important by the decision maker. Biodiversity The purpose of this criterion is to appraise the ecological impact of the road scheme on habitats, species, or natural features. Heritage this criterion assesses the impact of the proposal on the historic environment. Water. In order to gauge the effect of the proposal on the water environment, a risk-based approach is adapted to assess its potentially negative impact on both water quality and land drainage. The next objective is safety. This criterion measures the extent to which the proposal improves the safety for travelers indicating its effectiveness in terms of the monetary value in present value terms of the reduction in accidents brought over directly by the construction of the new or improved road. This requires accidents to be broken down into those causing death, those causing serious injury and those resulting in only slight injury. The third objective is economy. The degree to which the proposal contributes both to economic efficiency and to sustainable economic growth in appropriate locations is assessed under this heading. Journey times and vehicle operating cost. The effectiveness of the proposal on this criterion is measured in terms of the monetary value, in present value terms, of the reductions in both journey times and vehicle operating cost brought about directly by the construction of the new or improved road. Regeneration. This evaluates whether the proposal is consistent with government regeneration objectives. The final assessment is a simple yes or no to this question, based on the extent to which the road is potentially beneficial for designated regeneration areas and on the existence of significant developments within or near regeneration areas likely to depend on the road's construction. The fourth objective is accessibility. This criterion relates to the proposal's impact on the journeys made within the locality by mo modes of transport other than the private car, assessing whether the proposed project will make it easier or more difficult for people to journey to work by public transport, on foot, by bicycle or other means. Under the accessibility is pedestrian, cyclist, and equestrians. This sub-criterion relates to the proposal's impact on the journeys made within the locality on foot or pedestrian, by bicycle or cyclist, or by horse or equestrian. The assessment should be based on the year of opening, taking typically daily conditions. Access to public transport The extent to which access to public transport by non-motorized modes is affected by the proposal Assess within this heading. The last and final objective is the integration. This criterion assesses in broad terms the compatibility of the proposal with land use and transportation plans and policies at local, regional, and national level. Ngayon, ay dumako naman tayo sa ikalawang topic, ang basic elements of traffic analysis. Aking tatalakay ng ilan sa mga elemento nito. Ito ay ang mga speed, flow, and density of a stream of traffic, speed density relationship, flow density relationship, speed flow relationship. First subtopic is speed, flow, and density stream of traffic. Traffic flow, Q, 
is derived as the number of vehicles and passing in some given point on the highway in a given time interval t. In general terms, Q is expressed in vehicles per unit time. The number of vehicles in a given section of highway can also be computed in terms of density or concentration of traffic as follows. Where K is the traffic density, N measure of the number of vehicles, and L is the occupying length of a roadway. The second subtopic is the speed density relationship. The speed density relationship is linear with a negative slope. Therefore, as the density increases, the speed of the roadway decreases. The line crosses the speed axis Y at the free flow speed and the line crosses the density axis X at the jump density. Here, the speed approaches free flow speed as the density approaches zero. As the density increases, the speed of the vehicles in the roadway decreases. The speed reaches approximately zero when the density equals the jump density. In mathematical terms, this linear relationship gives rise to the following equations. The general form of Greenshield's speed density relationship can also express as where C1 and C2 are constants. Flow density relationship. In the study of traffic flow theory, the flow density diagram is used to determine the traffic state of roadway. The triangular curve consists of two vectors. The first vector is the free flow side of the curve. This vector is created by placing the free flow velocity vector of a roadway at the origin of the flow density graph. The second vector is the congested branch, which is created by placing the vector of the shock wave speed at zero flow and jump density. The congested branch has a negative slope, which implies that the higher the density on the congested branch, the lower the flow. Therefore, even though there are more cars on the road, the number of cars passing a single point is less than if there were fewer cars on the road. The intersection of free flow and congested vectors is the apex of the curb and is considered the capacity of the roadway, which is the traffic condition at which the maximum number of vehicles can pass by a point in a given time period. Following the direct relationship, flow and density is derived. In order to establish the density at which maximum flow occurs, since u sub f is not equal to zero, the term within the brackets must equal to zero. Therefore, km, the density at maximum flow, is thus equal to half the jump density kj. Speed flow relationship. Speed flow diagrams are used to determine the speed at which the optimum flow occurs. The speed flow curve also consists of two branches, the free flow and congested branches. The diagram is not a function, allowing the flow variable to exist at two different speeds. The flow variable ex existing at two different speeds occurs when the speed is higher and the density is lower, or when the speed is lower and the density is higher which allows for the same flow rate. The speed flow diagram is a parabola. The parabola suggests that the only time there is free flow speed is when the density approaches zero. It also suggests that as the flow increases, the speed decreases. This parabolic graph also contains an optimum flow. The optimum flow also divides the free flow and congested branches on the parabolic graph. In order to derive this relationship, the linear relationship is rearranged. By combining this formula, the following relationship is derived. In order to find the speed at maximum flow, since the density at maximum flow is not equal to zero, the term within the brackets must equal to zero. Therefore, u sub m, the speed at maximum flow, 
is thus equal to half the free flow speed u sub f. For the continuation, determining the capacity of highway, the level of service approach as its introduction and some definitions, another is maximum service flow rates for multi-lane highways, the maximum service flow rates for two-lane highways, sizing a road using the highway capacity manual approach, and the estimation of AADT. Determining the capacity of highway. A highway capacity, it is the amount of vehicles and passengers that a road accommodate. There are two approaches used to determine the capacity of highway. First is the level of service approach, and the second is used in Britain, which is put forward practical capacities for roads of various sizes and with carrying different types of traffic. Let's focus on the level of service approach. It describes the operation conditions from the viewpoint of the road user in terms of travel time and traffic speed, freedom to maneuver or traffic interruption. Ang principal factor nito ay ang speed flow density na nangyayari sa highway. Nagkaroon ng 6 level of service ranging from A as the best to F which is the worst. Ang highway capacity manual, sorry it's typo, it should be highway capacity manual from TRB 1985 in the US. The first level of service is service A. This represents free flow condition where traffic flow is virtually zero. Only the geometric design of the features of the highway. The geometric designs is about the design of the road elements. It can be influenced by the characteristics of the vehicle, behavior of the driver, traffic volume, and traffic speed. So the comfort and convenience levels for road users are very high as vehicles have almost complete freedom to maneuver. Dito, imagine nyo yung isang kalsada na napakaunti lang ng mga sasakyan na dumadaan. Dito, nangyayari yung service aid. Walang mangyayaring traffic, walang mabigat na traffic volume or traffic speed and that kind of service. For service B, represents reasonable free flow condition. The comfort and convenience levels for road users are still relatively high as vehicles have only slightly reduced freedom to maneuver. And then, minor accidents are accommodated with ease all the local deterioration in traffic flow conditions would be more discernible than in a service A. Ang pinagkaiba ng service B from service A ay meron ng minor accident and also nadadagdagan na yung mga sasakyan. For service C, stable flow conditions represent while minor incident will result in the formation of chaos and the speed chosen by the driver is substantially affected by that of the other vehicles and the comfort and convenience have decreased perceptibly at this level. So at this level, na-reduce na yung performance ng highway kasi mas marami ng sasakyan na dumadaan unlike dun sa dalawang service na nauna. And there are marked restrictions in the ability of maneuver and kailangan talaga ng pag-iingat kapag nagbabago ng liin sa kalsada kasi marami ka ng nakakasalubong at marami ka ng kasunod na mga sasakyan. For service D, the highway is operating at high density levels but stable flow still prevails and flow levels will result in significant with operational difficulties on the highway. Mayroon ng mga severe restrictions on a driver's ability to maneuver and the comfort and convenience is at poor level. At this service, mas marami ng mga sasakyan na dumaraan at mas mabigat na ang daloy sa highway. Hindi na siya katulad ng mga naunang tatlong service na papatiks-patiks lang dito. Talaga ay nasa poor level of convenience and comfort na siya. Next, service E. Represent the levels at which the capacity of the highway has been reached. Traffic flow condition best described as unstable with any traffic incident 
causing queuing and even breakdown. The level of comfort and convenience are at very poor state. So the traffic speed are all relatively uniform. Kula conditions are getting worse. Ito ay mainly na nangyayari sa Manila. Lalo na kapag mga work hours, talagang sabay-sabay yung mga sasakyan. For service F, describes a state of breakdown or first flaw with full law exceeding capacity and the operating conditions are highly unstable with constant queuing and traffic moving on a stop-go basis. Flow condition is at worst level and also the comfort and convenience is hindi mo na siya ma-observe. Nasa stop-go basis na siya kasi sa sobrang dami ng sasakyan as in, oh, nagkakaroon na ng exceeding capacity sa highway. Hindi na makaula yung mga sasakyan. Dito na yung kailangan magbigayan para at least magkaroon man lang ng movement sa highway. In this diagram show flow or capacity from 0 to 10 and the speed limit happen for each level of service. In order to determine a road's level of service, let's have a comprehension of the relationship between early volume, peak R, and the service flow. Early volume is the highest early volume within 24 hour period. Peak R factor is equal to the early volume divided by the peak 15 minute flow times 4. The service flow or the SF is the peak 15 minute flow multiplied by the early value. For maximum service flow rates for multi-lane highways, the highway capacity manual generates maximum flow values obtainable on a multi-lane highway given a certain speed limit and prevailing level of service. For ideal condition of maximum service flow rates is equal to C sub J times quantity V over C times N, where C sub J is the capacity of a standard highway lane for a given design speed J times the volume by capacity ratio, which is the V over C and N as the numbers of lane in each direction. In this table, this is the standard values of capacity of a standard highway lane for a given design speed. For an ideal condition, service flow rate is equal to C sub J times V over C times N times F of W times F of HB times F of P times F of E, where SF sub I is equal to the service flow rate, C sub J is the capacity of standard highway lane for a given design speed J, V over C sub I is the volume by capacity ratio, N is the number of lanes in each direction, F sub W is the adjustment factor and F sub HB is the resulting reduction in capacity. In this table, it is the standard value for the maximum ratios of flow to capacity for each level of service and design speed limit. Magagamit natin ang mga table na ito kapag tayo ay nagsasob na ng mga problem. At ito namang table 4.3, ito ay yung mga values sa adjustment factor for non ideal condition. And ito yung mga distance of obstruction from travel edge, lane width, the lane width in meter, and the obstructions on both side or the one side of the road. Passengers car equivalent or PCE or the number of equivalent private cars occupy the same quantity of road space is primarily dependent on the terrain of the highway. The PCE for trucks, buses, recreational vehicles are defined for the different classes of terrain. For the first class is the level terrain which is categorized as horizontal or vertical alignment that allow heavy vehicles to maintain the same speed as private cars. While rolling terrain is gradient or horizontal alignment that result in the speed of the heavy vehicle is questioned being answered to a value substantially below to those of the private car on the same stretch of the roadway. While mountain terrain, those gradients or horizontal alignment that result in the vehicle operating at its maximum speed for a substantial distance. Those terrains are described according to the capacity of vehicles and to maintain the speed of the different mode of transportation. 
This table is for the correction factor and for the different type of tearing. Maximum service flow rate for two lanes. Where one lane is available for traffic in each direction, a two-lane highway applies. This maneuver is therefore subject to geometric constraint, most noticeably passing slight distance, but also the tearing of the stretch of road question. Ideal conditions assume the following. For the non-ideal condition, the capacity of the highway reduces from 2,800 PCU per hour based on the following equation. Sizing a road using the highway capacity. When sizing a new roadway, a desired level of service is chosen by the designer. This value is then used in conjunction with the design traffic volume in order to select an appropriate cross-section for the highway. Design early volume or DHB is equal to K sub I times AADD where K sub I is the 8th highest annual early volume while AADT is the annual average daily traffic. Since design early volume is a two-directional flow, the flow in the peak direction or the directional design or volume as DDHB is estimated by multiplying it by a directional factor D which result to K times D times AADT. This table shows a flow ranges from different classes of rural highway where carriageway type as is AADT range and the quality of axis. Traffic was split into the following five categories. The cars, which include taxis, minibuses, and camper vans, light good vehicles or LGVS, other good vehicles or UGV1, other good vehicles UGV2, buses and coaches or PSB, which are buses and minibuses with the capacity for more than six passengers. Okay, let's do some sample problem for maximum service flow rate in multi-lane highway. First problem is a rural divide four-lane highway has a peak R volume in one direction of 1,850 vehicles per hour. Ideal conditions apply. Therefore, there are no heavy good vehicles, buses, or recreational vehicles in the traffic. The peak R factor is 0.8. The design speed limit is 70 m per hour. Determine the level of service being pro provided by the highway. For the solution, the given hour, early volume during the peak hour, which is 1850, peak hour factor is 0 0.8, service flow rate is equal to V over P of H direct substitution to the formula the service flow rate is 2312.5 vehicles per hour number of lanes in each direction is 2 so derived from the formula we will get the volume by capacity ratio which is the service flow rate divided by the capacity of a standard highway lane for a given design so the volume by capacity ratio is 0 0.58 therefore the ratio of flow to capacity is greater than 0 0.54 but less than 0 0.71. So the highway thus provides level of service C. Next problem, a two-lane highway has lane widths of 9 feet or 2.75 meter, clear hard shoulders. There are no passing zones along 40% of its length. The directional split is 70 over 30 in favor of the peak direction. The percentage for the various heavy vehicle types are For the solution, since the road is operating at capacity, the level of service is assumed to be E. Therefore, F sub W is 0 0.76, F sub D is 0 0.89. Rolling terrain, level of service, therefore ET is 5, EB is 2.9, and ER is 3.3. .3. Substitute the value to the equation where F of H sub B is 0 0.657 and then service of flow rate is equal to 1,145 vehicles per hour. 
Maraming salamat po sa time ninyo sa pakikinig na wamang naitindihan po kayo sa vlog na ito. So don't forget to subscribe and click the ring bell for more updates. Keep safe everyone. Thank you.